hello, and welcome to the Oxford Downtown Diaries. How are you today? So good. We are your dynamic duo, Kelly Westbrook and Kimberly Smith. And first to congratulate you Aww. on your new position as assistant director. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Very excited. So we've been busy, but oh my goodness. probably the most exciting thing that we've done in the past month is hired our new intern. I know. Are you super excited for our guests today? Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Every day. Every time. Yes, we are. So our ladies started yesterday. And they're here today with us. We have Lola and Larissa. I think it's so funny. Somebody asked me the other day, did you do it on purpose? And I'm like, what? And they said, Lola, Larissa, Kimberly, and Kelly. Obviously. Yes. It was subconscious, but yes, it worked. Yes. So didn't you come up with a little team name yesterday? Uh, it's Lalo Kiki. Kiki? K-E-K-I. I don't know. <laughs> did you guys get that? We I texted did. I thought them. that was funny. Okay. Because I looked to Kimberly and I thought, you probably are too young to know what that really is. Like when they had Ben Affleck and yep. um, Jennifer. Jennifer. Benefer? Was that it? Yeah. And so I'm like, they're they're not going to know what I'm yeah. talking about. Oh, no. I got it right away. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, okay. I thought it was funny. Was I didn't. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It makes me feel less old. Thank you so much. Well, I am old and I still didn't get it. I was like, <laughs> is she having a, a situation right now? Is she okay? Like text to like talk to text or something. But then it took me a second, but I got it. <laughs> La Lokika. I love it. There you go. Good. That's sounds perfect. very Hawaiian. Yeah, I like it. I Hawaiian and sh- Oxford. That's awesome. Or we could do team building in okay. Hawaii. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. I'm all for this. I don't think the taxpayer money would oh, cover gosh, that, but no. that's fine. No. So we want to welcome Lola and Larissa to our team. We're excited welcome. to have you. We thought, what a better way to kick off the second day of the job than having you guys introduced <laughs> to the entire community. <laughs> So uh, I'm excited to just hear a little bit about your backgrounds. Um, we went through the interview process. Uh, the nice thing is, is you're here on part of a grant mm-hmm. from the Four Communities Foundation that we were able to apply for to help pay you this summer. So we're very thankful for that, that you'll be working with us all summer. And um, we might have some viewers ask, questions. So I'm monitoring Facebook, but I just really want to hear more about your backgrounds and school and we can kind of go from there. So Larissa, why don't you start? Just tell us a little bit about you. Okay, perfect. Well, my name is Larissa Hollingsworth and I am a recent graduate of Grand Valley State University where I double majored in marketing and business management. So go Lakers, Laker up. (laughs) I'm really excited to be graduating um, because it's been a long road, four years of school. You know, I'm really excited and eager to start working. So um, I'm really excited for this internship because I have a really deep love for Oxford and I got to talk about it a little bit at the last board meeting we had. Um, I even said that last summer we moved out of Oxford for a short, short period of time. It was uh, this time last year. And we only stayed there for a few months before we were planning moving back to Oxford. No kidding. Yes, yes. So we, like, we're so excited. It was Lake St. Clair. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's a beautiful area. We just realized that Oxford is the place for us. Um, So, yeah, we were super excited. We were moving to a lake. We got a boat and everything. Um, And then, yeah, we moved back really quickly because we realized this is the people we love, the community we love, and it's where we consider our home. So, And you can bring your boat. Yeah, and (laughs) we actually sold our boat. boat? We We were already planning our next meeting on the boat. I know, yeah, Yeah. next meeting. (laughs) But, yeah, so I think there's some sort of rule with um, the lake that we're actually on now in Oxford that, like, certain boats are only allowed. Gotcha. Um, So we might get a different one. We'll see. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we'll see. But, yeah. So I grew up in Oxford. I went to Oxford High School. I have siblings that also went to Oxford High School, grew up there. And we just realized that this is the community we love, like I said. So I'm really excited to start working for Oxford DDA. Well, awesome. welcome back. And Thank we have you. a lot of work for you to do. So I'm glad that you're both eager. Because yep. you both were <laughs> me to work. very eager and motivated yesterday, which is lovely to see for us. Yeah, so great. And Lola, I know your mom, um, she's one of our downtown business owners at Twinkle Toes. And I hear that you'll be working there a little bit this summer too. But tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so I just finished my junior year at Michigan State University. Yay, go State. Go Green. (laughs) 
<laughs> and um, I'm in the Bro College of Business there, and I'm majoring in marketing and minoring in leadership of organizations. And it was a good long school year, and I'm excited to be here in Oxford. You know, working in my mom's store, Twinkle Toes, I got to know Oxford since I'm originally from Shelby Township. And so I've gotten to love the downtown and the city of Oxford, and I'm really excited to work for the DBA. Yay. Yay. Well, we're excited to have both of you. Yeah. Um, we work really hard, but we also have a ton of fun in doing it. And I'm sure you could already tell that just spending one day in the office <laughs> with us yesterday. Um, it's so funny because repeatedly um, our sweet village manager continues to shut our door because we're the <laughs> loudest office at the village. Yes. Um, but it's because we're very passionate about what we do and passionate about our business owners and them thriving and especially in this community, you know, we were in a um, community gathering this morning with all the community leaders. And the one thing I think that everybody said when we went round table was how much this community pulls you in. And even if you do move away, it seems that you come back. And, you know, to Larissa's point mm -hmm. about that just happening to you guys, that just goes to show how special this community is and how much it really does have to offer and I hope that we're a big part of that. I heard this morning that we were. So <laughs> that's, awesome. that's beautiful to hear because I do, I grew up in, closer to Detroit in a suburb. And so this is a new experience for me living in a small town. Um, we've talked about this a lot over the last couple of years, but so it's, it's been a little bit of a culture shock for me living in a small town, but it is, there are so many wonderful benefits of the small community and the sharing and the giving together and the support. So it's it's been it's been wonderful. Yeah. So we gave you some projects that you're going to be working on, and there's quite a list. But out of anything yesterday that you guys were talking with us about, what do you think is going to be one of the favorite things that you work on this summer? Yeah, I'm really excited to get to know the businesses around Oxford. Um, even on our first day, we got to sit in on meetings and I got to meet a lot of the business owners. And I thought that was really cool. Just in a short amount of time, I met like 10 business owners. Mm -hmm. So I'm really thankful for that opportunity because I'm like, wow, it's like really growing my own network here. So I think it's a great opportunity. I'm going to go around and talk to a lot of the business owners and uh, get to know a lot of the like stores and everything around Oxford. So I think that'll be a great part of it. Yeah, I know I'm excited for like the social media aspect of it and getting to uh, maybe make some TikTok videos or <laughs> Instagram <laughs> posts and get connected with some of the business owners as well. Yeah, it's funny because we so we had our huddle yesterday that you were part of. And for those that don't know, that's uh, a meeting that we try and host once a month, just depending Sometimes on schedules. Sometimes it gets busy. It yeah. does. But we, have all, we invite all of the business owners to come sit down or call in via Zoom. And just hear what we're working on, what we have coming up. We have an open uh, forum for people to ask questions or talk about issues. And one of the things that we talked about is implementing office hours for the DDA. And I think you can speak to it. I think you did a little bit. But, like, the traffic of people and volume of people coming in between meetings and then just pop-ins is really requiring us to, unfortunately, have to dedicate specific hours for people to pop in. Just because we're not, I was talking with a business owner this morning about that and um, just mentioning that we don't, like, we'll have people visiting and we love spending time with the business owners. It's always a fun, wonderful time. And, you know, if we can help solve problems, that's great. But then we sit and look at each other at, like, right before we're about to leave and go, okay, well, we did not accomplish anything yes, that we needed yes. to on our to-do list. I have things from last week that we still need to talk about because we have so much traffic in our office, which again, we'll continue to do, but it just may be in a more, more structured format. Yeah, it's just scheduled. I went yeah. to the National Conference in Alabama uh, last week and some of the different conferences there were all about, okay, how do you be successful in the role as a DDA director? And it also also talked a lot about mental health as a DDA director because you do have so many things to accomplish. Like, how do you keep up with everything? And one of the things stepping out of that was 
be more protective of your time, but not so that you can't meet with those people, but so that you can give them your full attention. And that just really hit home for me that I want to be able to meet with all the business owners, but I want to be 100% present when we do that. And the only way to do that is through scheduling and managing our time more wisely. And hopefully you guys taking more off our plate. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and I think just to, to, I can't use the same word that I'm going to use, but to add on to that is the follow-up after. So we have these meetings with the business owners or any people that need something from us. And we're there, we're present, we get a list of action items that we need to do after. And then that, when do we do that? (laughs) Right? So that's the piece too that we need to kind of structure into our schedules as well is we need that time to be able to deliver the things that we've discussed. So yeah, it's going to be great. Let's talk (laughs) through some of these projects. Speaking of work. Um, But Uh (laughs) one thing that I'm very excited about, and I know both of you guys are too, is this historic project that we're going to be implementing. Our DDA board has been talking about this for two years now. Mm -hmm. And I will absolutely take the heat on this one that I should have been on this two years ago. But again, time slips away. But one thing that we really want to do is we our tagline with the DDA is bridging home and history. And we have such a deep, rich history here in Oxford and especially downtown with all of our historic buildings. And um, there's so many beautiful stories that I don't know if even the younger generation would know where to find some of those things. So one thing that we're going to do is we're going to implement this um, project of history with plaques that are on all of the historic buildings that feature a QR code where people can scan it and it'll link to the DDA website. And then from there, people will be able to read about the history of the buildings and the people there and really anything that we have. And so we're working with Drew Holt and the museum on that. And go ahead. Do you want to add to that project? No. Okay. All right. Well, (laughs) I'm excited about it. Um, I know that that's probably a different project that maybe you guys weren't anticipating walking into the DDA, but what do you guys think about that project? Do you feel like, I mean, is history your thing? Do you know anything about Oxford history? Um, you know, I know a small amount, but I definitely feel like there's more to learn. And I feel like with technology and QR codes, that makes such an easy way for people to quickly and easily learn Um, So I think that's a great idea. And obviously, like, that's something that maybe we have a little bit more experience with of, like, making QR codes and things like that. I know Yeah, because you're young (laughs) and we're old. (laughs) Well, I know there's even certain things. Like, have you guys seen those dot cards where, like, you put them right up to your phone and it pulls up, like, a website of how to, like, a bunch of links. So I think there's, yeah, I know. <laughs> Teach me. I know. So I just think that's a really cool way to learn about history, right? At the touch of your fingertips. I think that's really cool. For sure. And Lola, I feel like since you know TikTok so well, yes. there is a way that you're going to connect TikTok and history while I you're love here. This. Oh, yeah. And I'm also super excited to learn more about the Oxford history because, like I said, I'm not from here, so I don't really know that much. So. I'm excited to learn myself and make it easier for other people to know that history, too. Yeah, I'm hoping that we can get this younger generation of people involved. And I think with you guys both coming in and having that, you know, fresh and young perspective Mm -hmm. and things like that and not working here for two years like Kimberly has and three like I have, we can look to you to say, hey, does this make sense or is this helpful or is this exciting? And then hopefully eventually do a walking tour downtown with these places and develop maps and things like that. Yeah, of course, because I think it's really important to leverage Oxford into the future, Mm -hmm. but also really keep that historical value. Yeah, and I think we had talked about this before, I think even last summer. And one thing I do want to, I'm going to correct you on something Ouch. because, no, it's <laughs> okay. a good thing. She becomes um, an assistant director. Look where we're I at. I know. Settle down, Kim. Um, no, you had mentioned that we've been, the board has been talking about this for the last two years, but it's not like we weren't doing anything. Yeah. We've, it's just been a priority standpoint. Yeah. So, you know, I just want to highlight, you have done a tremendous amount of things and led us in a very wonderful direction in the last two years. So now is the time for us to focus on the history. But um, I think we talked about this last summer is like trying to engage the younger community within and around Oxford to participate in our events a little bit more. And I think 
the history piece and like your knowledge of culture of mm-hmm. that generation, I think is going to be really helpful for us to be able to do that, giving us new ideas because we're very, um, learnable is not the right word, but we're teachable. Teachable. Yes. We're thank teachable you. Teachable and, you very know, teachable. I, you we're just cool. don't know. Are we're we? Cool and hip. Are we? <laughs> we're going to be. Let's <laughs> ask, <laughs> let's follow up at the end of the summer and ask them if we're cool and hip, okay? I think you guys are. I think okay. you're cool. Too. Okay. Yeah. I, you have to say that. No. Whatever. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Well, Sorry. that's. I don't mean to interrupt no, you. No, go ahead. Please. I even thought it was really cool that I got to sit in on a short meeting yesterday about, you know, a young, two young business owners coming into Oxford. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was really amazing to see young people coming in with a business that they created and introducing it to Oxford. So, yeah, yeah. I feel like the younger generation is already kind of moving in. It's true, because <laughs> I think our last couple of businesses have been on the younger side. Yeah, the way I judge that is they're younger than me. <laughs> so, uh, and that really has been the last yeah. two businesses and the one, um, the prospect that we met yeah. with yesterday and the new ice cream shop that's oh my coming. Gosh, She's I'm so young. excited. And, but you know, I think the thing is, and we heard it yesterday when um, they came in, to your point, Larissa, is they came in and they said, we want to be in Oxford because of the energy and because of all the events and because we are reaching that younger demographic that Mm -hmm. is finally starting to engage with the community. And I just think that that's something that we've really been working on. We'd hoped that we would always hear, but we're starting to finally hear it. And we got a call from the Oakland Times yesterday and wanting to do a story on um, how we took farmers market folks and vendors that now are in storefronts. And so it's things like that that people are starting to finally hear about those things. And, you know, some of it's grassroots marketing and it takes a while to catch on. But I think once it does, it's kind of like wildfire. Like yeah. people will start to really want to be here and come here. And we had, I think, only two spaces in the downtown that we could even talk about because yeah. almost everything is full right now. Yeah, it, it's a g- great problem to have. I will say when the, the group came in yesterday, and I will not mention any names of where they're looking, but they're, we are one of several communities that they're looking to put their business. And they mentioned that they, one of the communities that they had looked at, they did not want to proceed with because it was more of a sleepy downtown, <laughs> yes, which yes. I thought was a very nice um, adjective. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was happy to hear the the contrast between what they felt from that community and what they felt from Oxford. So that was like very heartwarming. Very much. Yeah. And I hope that, you know, for you guys and as you're working on these other projects, I hope that, you know, pulling you into meetings like that and being able to just share and have you listen in. I hope that that is so beneficial for your future careers and for, you know, your future aspirations because you don't know what you don't know. And, but sometimes like sitting in like that and thinking about being an entrepreneur one day and just knowing, okay, if I'm going to open someplace or if I want to have a storefront one day, I can start with the local government and learn a lot before I even commit to someplace. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I hope that that's beneficial. Yeah, I think that we, I know we both talked about how much we learned just from sitting in on two meetings, like the amount of information. It was crazy. It's so good to listen in on those types of things. And I think the thing, the skills that you're going to learn this summer, whether you choose to stay within government or not, the relationship building, the communication, the um, interactions that you have with business owners or leadership of government or businesses, I think that is something that you could take anywhere. So that's actually an interesting question. Do you, either of you have plans or like goals that you're looking toward when it comes to your career? Um, yeah, I mentioned this at the board meeting as well. I come from a legacy of business owners and it has really inspired me for my future. Um, I'm still trying to work out what that business would be, um, but opening my own business and being my own boss really interests me. So I do see that in my future of when I do find what I'm really passionate about and what I want that business to be, I do see myself opening my own business. So maybe you'll see me yeah, downtown Oxford, Oxford one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because if you pick a different Main Street after oh, this, never, oh, never. girl. <laughs> And you know what? You can start at our market. There There we go. go. (laughs) There we go. What about you, Lola? Yeah, so 
my mom is a small business owner in Oxford, and so that's really inspiring to me because she she's doing that right now. And so that's definitely, I love working in the store, and I love talking and meeting all the people of Oxford. So that's definitely something that I would consider. I Honestly, I'm not really 100% sure what I want to do since I'm still in college and figuring everything out. And my dad is also in business, so definitely something with business or marketing, like, that's what I'm really interested in. Yeah, and you don't have to know. No, no. no. Yeah. I, I still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's funny because I feel like a lot of grown-ups, <laughs> they went to school for a specific thing. They had an idea of what they wanted to do, and then they're maybe not always where they started or where they planned to be, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Well, you started in HR. I and did. Now you're working here. in government. I know. Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, and that's a really cool thing about going to school for business as well, and I'm sure you can attest to this. It teaches you to be very broad Mm -hmm. in what you're willing to do and jobs that you're willing to look at. Um, Yeah, it teaches you to kind of have like a wider range of skills and like a stance on what you could see yourself doing. Yeah, absolutely. And we're about to throw you guys in full blast next week (laughs) um, with maybe two two more days of training, but then you go right into spring cleanup and um, planting flowers and staining trolleys. And (laughs) you definitely will not be bored. (laughs) Those are the glamorous parts. Those are. (laughs) Yes. And I don't, I don't know if people, I don't think they realize that. Oh, probably not. Yeah. There's like, Yeah, because, I mean, we we share pictures on Facebook and, you know, we don't, that was part of why we decided to do the podcast and sharing like a day in the life of, because I don't know that everybody really understands. We met, or we met with um, Lake Orion this morning, which we do every week typically, just to kind of partner, see where we're at. And they were talking about their flower baskets in downtown and how, you know, the process of watering the flowers. And we were talking about our process here in Oxford. And it's interesting, like, who would have thought that, you know, in Lake Orion, they are responsible for watering their own plants in the downtown. So somebody on their staff has to do that. And we luckily have a relationship with our village and the DPW, and they do that for us. Um, But yeah, there's other glamorous pieces that we have, like cleaning out the trolley and yep. staining it. And These are the weeds. things I have nightmares about. <laughs> yeah. So what do you like to do in your free time? What are you going to be doing this summer when you're not working? I know I'm going to be, when I'm not working, outside yeah. tanning and catching up on the sun. And I also like to just hang out with my friends. I'm also taking two classes right now at, okay. online at Michigan State. So, What classes are you taking? Yeah, so I'm taking a class that's related to my minor, which is leadership and organization. So it's like a leadership class. And then I'm also taking like an, it's an elective class um, about like society and stuff like that. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. So you'll be busy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to be a busy girl this summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, it's a long road with those classes. I have a couple to finish up to, even though I did walk at commencement, and I can attest to that, that, you know, it feels like it's never ending, but the end is near for the both of us. Um, same type of thing. I really want to be spending my time outside when I'm not working. Um, I'm also working at promoting another business called Combs Electric. Um, so I'll be doing that when I'm not here. Um, And yeah, just working, being outside, spending time with my family. I've been at school for the past four years, so it's really weird not planning on going back. And so, yeah, so I'll be able to spend a lot of time with family and friends that I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, that's awesome. And what online classes are you taking this summer? I actually saved some gen eds that I was supposed to take my freshman and sophomore year. Okay. And I didn't want to do them because it's like science, history, and that's just not my thing. I'm like, I want to get right into those business classes. But now I'm towards the end, and they've still been lingering, lingering, and I've been pushing them off. So I do have a couple um, gen eds to take. Gotcha. Yep. Always those gen eds. I remember those so well. (laughs) Yep. Oh, man. Well, what's new with you, Miss Kelly? Um, So we have been, we're in the thick of it right now to Mm -hmm. get the rest of everything set up for our summer events. Um, So, you know, line dancing starts in less than two two weeks. weeks. Yeah. Um, Wind down Wednesdays behind Victoria's. We have the car Car crews. And, you know, the never ending trolley schedule and just keeping up on maintenance and things like that. So um, it's been really busy. I think that one thing that we've started to talk about, but 
we would love to have a volunteer come on board is to manage our volunteers. And I know that seems silly, a volunteer to manage our volunteers. But if there's anybody listening who'd be interested in coming on and helping us more as a volunteer on a weekly basis, we are looking for that person. Um, It seems silly to think that you need somebody to manage volunteers, but it does take up so much of our time. And I know Sign Up Genius, you've been on there trying to promote and get volunteers. So I think that that would be another um, thing for us to work on and have somebody that could help us. I would love that. Yes. Because it's everybody likes the idea of volunteering and being involved in the community. And people are very passionate about the community. But when it, we have an event, sometimes we don't always – and obviously schedules. I, I understand this time of year is insane. It's crazy for with a kids lot of people. and everything. Yes, totally get it. But going through our history of ha- our the people that have expressed interest – we just don't have the time to reach out individually to all of those people, but that would be helpful to do. Yeah, because something that I'm really passionate about when it comes to volunteering, and this is from me um, volunteering on so many different boards and committees for other organizations, is I really want to make sure that you're volunteering in a space that you're really passionate about because I think that's when we have long-term volunteers and volunteers stay. Yeah. So it's, you know, it seems – simple to just email people and say, oh yeah, just show up to this event or do this. But one thing that I'm passionate about moving forward is understanding what those people actually want to do within the organization. One, to make the most impact for the organization, but two, to make sure that they feel fulfilled as well. So finding somebody to help us to do that and actually get to know our volunteers and make sure that we are even just thanking them in the right way. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we can do that. And then we're also working on finding volunteers for our 501 board. Yeah. That's coming up as well. And you guys were both at the board meeting the other night and heard a little bit about that. It is a process. And I know you've been working with the attorneys on getting it set up. Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Oh, fun. <laughs> oh, okay. nothing bad. Oh, no. good. No, okay. no, no, no. We just need to. I, I'm like, yeah. oh, no, it hit her list. <laughs> no, no, no. It is on my list only because I couldn't make it to the board meeting. So yes. I need to follow up. But. No, I absolutely agree about with the volunteers because I remember when I first joined, that was one of the thing, one of the huge projects that you had slated for me. And I felt like it started to go in that direction. And, and then, then I said, here, go in all these directions. Yeah, here, do all of these other things. And it hasn't, unfortunately, been at the top of that list. So it would be lovely to have some, like a point person. Yes. Kind of ma- like growing and managing that program. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, I look at it and I'm like, okay, it needs to be another extension of us, right? Mm-hmm. That you're putting your best foot forward and the best face forward to represent the DDA. Yeah. Same reason why we're so picky with our interns. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because we are really passionate about somebody bringing the energy and everything that the DDA um, really stands for in our community. Um, But let's switch gears to you tell me about this market because you have done a (laughs) phenomenal job. I'm very excited. And you brought on a special vendor this week. Oh, yes, we did. We found a produce and fruit vegetable. They have eggs, they have cheese, and they have these vinegar drinks. So we're super excited about this vendor. Amazing. Amazing. So we have a huge array of products for our market. We are past our capacity. We are going to have... Why is that, Kimberly? Tell, um, tell us why. I'm not going to throw you under the bus. Kelly. I just threw myself. I'm Go ahead and gonna, just tell no, them. No, I'm not going to do it. I have a hard time saying no. <laughs> and so when somebody calls and they're very excited about their business, I go to Kimberly and I go, please, just one more space. That's not really how that goes, but <laughs> it's more make space for this person, which it's fine though. I mean, we love the market. We love the vendors. They're all wonderful vendors. And unfortunately, you know, we had kind of a cap and we've had a couple more kind of sneak in, but we do have a wait list as well. So it's going to be wonderful. We have food. We have really unique products that we didn't have last year. We have some jewelry. We have um, some interesting food items. I don't have them all committed to memory, but like I'm just trying to think through. We have some that are returning from last year as well. So we're going to have um, 
Cairo's Pizza, which was there last year. Yeah. Yep. We're going to have, I'm trying to think what else. I feel like there's the, we the beverage. We have very unique infused honeys, I yep. know, or one there's of like them. There's like a chili oil. There's dressings. Yeah. There's like garlic spreads. I mean, very cool, interesting. Really, thing. really yeah. neat. And good job getting everybody committed and everybody paid and keeping track of all that paperwork because that is not easy. So, so much fun. And I'm going to share with the interns next week how we do that and ask for their help in organizing that a little bit better. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. And we kick off July 11th, so we still have some time. Um, but yep. yeah. And the White House Village yeah. um, storefronts are having their market this Sunday from mm-hmm. 12 to 6. We did a live with Heather from Wild and Rooted this morning. And I know that Melissa from Farm Bureau was huge in implementing that market. So that'll be good too. kind of kick off the season. I think they're supposed to have good weather. So I That's think it'll exciting. be awesome. Uh, one other thing we need to talk about, we have a new board member because you were talking about the excitement and the enthusiasm and having people that are passionate about the DDA and the community. And we have a new board member this yeah, week. Yeah. So Holly Pfeiffer, who I adore, she sat on our promo committee for the past two years. She owns Oakland Corners in town. And she's just a wonderful person and community member. And I think she has volunteered for every single she event has. we have had. Yeah, they've been amazing. Yeah. And so we had a ton of wonderful applications. But at the end of the day, you know, we really do want somebody who has sat on a committee for a long time. And that somebody has the time then to commit to the DDA. And that really came through. So um, the board members made a recommendation and the village council voted her in on Tuesday. So we're excited. Congratulations, Holly. Yeah, it'll be really great to have her. What else do we have? I mean, I feel like that's enough. But yeah, we have that's, a lot. it's crazy. <laughs> and I don't want to scare our interns too oh, much. No. They're I not going to come back. I just wanted to add, we actually got to see Holly get sworn in as yeah. well, which was really yeah. cool. Yeah, to that's see that true. process too. On your first day, you're on getting it all. Day, I, I know. know. We got all the experiences. <laughs> yeah. And I even want, I thought it was funny when you were talking about not being able to say no. When we did have that meeting with the business that potentially was going to come to downtown Oxford, when we were talking about the vendors, you were like, we are full, but I'm sure we could squeeze she you did. in. She did, and I was like, okay. But I, know. <laughs> I will say that is a great, we won't say the name of the business, but it is a great addition to the mix if they choose to yes. be with the market because we're really excited about the potential for them to have their business in mm-hmm. Oxford, and I would love to have that product mix in our market mm-hmm. also. Agreed. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing there is – um. <laughs> So I do a small business on the side and have sat, set up at markets and things like that. And I just, I, I think that's the reason why I don't want to ever turn anyone down because it's usually a dream and they work so hard at it. And, you know, if we can just squeeze one more person yeah, in, I'm like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, Times it's, 10. It's so hard when it's someone's, you know, life yeah. passion and you just want to give them a chance. So yeah. I totally get it if you're able to. Yeah. I yeah. will say, though, we do have more markets. So we do have a couple in the fall and into the winter that we have their one time deals versus the the summer series. So there's always opportunity for vendors if it doesn't work out um, for the summer one for those like on our wait list. We have a huge one for our Scarecrow Fest. Scarecrow Fest, Fest, yeah. We had it in two of our quads last year, and we've talked about it a little bit for maybe next summer is expanding so that we can have more vendors and not have to turn people away. Um, But that just requires a little bit more planning. It does, and we need, yeah, we need a bigger space. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be great. 2025. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. We get, we're getting that ARPA funding. It's going to be great. So, well, thank you for both yeah. being here. We're so excited to have you as part of our team. And what did you put on the text yesterday? What was the four that you called us? Oh, I think I said the, yeah. the Fab Four. Fab yeah. four. <laughs> I'm good with that. I we'll just it. go with that this summer. Yeah. Awesome. The fab Four. Lay low, Kai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that so rolls off your tongue. I, I'm going to need a <laughs> I practiced it a few times. Yep. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. All right. So next week, do we have... We don't have our guests set up. We have a couple that would like to come on. So we we just need to schedule. Um, But if you're a business or a community leader and want to be on the show, we would love to have you. Um, I definitely ask if you. Right? We're open to other communities as well. Yeah, as long as it's still, you know, focused on Oxford and supporting our downtown. Good to go. Well, have a great weekend, everyone. And we will see you next week. Thank you.